I heard Rob Bradley speak uh, yesterday, and he described uh, the Enron uh, philosophy of how they went about bilking the public. And they had four principles, and I'm going to turn them on them in my conclusion. The principles were hide the data. Hide the data. Well, obviously, we know that the global warming alarmists are hiding the real data, ignoring it. The second thing is repeat a mantra. In Enron's cases, we're successful, we're making money, we're fabulous. Repeat it over and over again. I'm about to give you a mantra. Secondly is act arrogantly and assume everybody who doesn't agree with you is just dumb. Well, we, we certainly know that. And finally, which I've already covered, is enlist all kinds of constituencies that have a conflict of interest to expose you because they're making money on your back, the 500, Fortune 500 companies. So in conclusion, very simply, I think we need a mantra. We need something to repeat. We want to expose the facts. We want not to call people dummies. We want not to be arrogant. And we want to list, enlist people in their own self-interest of freedom. And so I've written this very brief statement. You can alter it <clears throat> any way you'd like, and most of it ha you have it in front of you. I have a few uh, uh, extra afterwards, or I can print out some more later. But I spent a lot of time coming up with something very simple that I can repeat to my audiences that will resonate with them. And it covers kind of all the, the points that we've talked about. Skeptics accurately, and, and my title is, it's not about climate, it's about freedom, which of course I stole from uh, Václav Havel. Skeptics accurately point out that previous support of man-caused global warming requires the use of selective rather than comprehensive data, which creates a false assessment of man's impact on his climate. This assessment is repeated endlessly with the intent of literally brainwashing the public while appealing to our arrogant belief that we are equal or superior to the universe's natural forces. All the time, hiding the fact that the major supporters of anthropogenic climate change tend to benefit significantly through acquisition of money and power. You don't have to use, thank you. <clears throat> you do not have to use mine. That's what I'm, that's my story and I'm sticking to it and I'm out talking to thousands of people. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have a, a podium in which I can uh, talk to groups that can embrace uh, reality. But I like to leave them with this statement. Whatever complex things I might have taught them, they can resonate with it. You can write your own, but it behooves you. You may not have my stage, but you all have a network of people who respect you, who you don't talk climate change to, who get their information to the news media. I mean, if everybody in this room in the course of a year altered the thought process of 36 folks on the street, and a, and a, a, a few of them felt strongly enough to pass it on, uh, exponentially, we can turn the public. And in the end, uh, I think it is the public that will determine whether the climate alarmists uh, really uh, take us down the path to destruction or we uh, survive their rather malevolent goals. Thank you very much.